since I'm trying with a new microphone, I can actually hear the, my voice back, so it should be going well now. Give a few minutes for people to join us, and then I'll give a bit of an introduction of what went on today, because things are afoot, or in this case, a pole. And you could say that things are above us now. Terrible pun, I know. No worry, I'll stop the puns, unless nobody donates, in which case I will just start the puns. It will be horrible puns for everybody for the next couple of hours. Also, I will apologize immediately. If you hear noise from my chair, it's very squeaky. It needs a little bit of WD-40, which I do have in my um, toolbox, which actually happens to be next to me. But I'm not going to do that live on stream because it's going to be very noisy, very annoying. And also I need some paper to make sure I don't just spread WD-40 everywhere. That thing is horrible to clean if you need to clean it up. Although I think I, I actually like the smell of the current formulation, which is a bit strange. I think the Italian equivalent has um, limonene inside, which is very lemony. It feels very lemony. It's lemon lubricant, which is very strange as a concept. Now 7.30, which is the time I gave everybody to join us here tonight, and as I repeated on Twitter, and you probably saw on the blog, and you probably are noticing by the top of this video, this is a special week in which I will stream every day at 7.30 London time, except on the weekend where I'm going to be doing 4.30 and 4 p.m. I'll be streaming my usual mix of open source project work and this time I will go with a little bit of electronics work as well which will probably be fun because I'm not very good with electronics so I'll be making a lot of mistakes I'll have a lot of blunders and there will be a lot of things that will not work out quite the way I expect them to um, and all of these in favor of Cuts Protection who's running an, ev an event this week uh, Poson Players to fundraise for their 2021 goals. If you are not aware of who Cuts Protection are, they're I think the number one uh, charity in the UK to look after cats um, and they have personal love of cats because I've grown up next to cats all the time. Um, at some point we had 17 cats at home and yeah, that's way too many cats overall and it was not easy, um, but we looked after them as best as we possibly could. Unfortunately, London being London, keeping a cat here is not easy, and we still don't have a cat here. And in the meantime, we've been at least helping out where we can with cat protection, which is to say right now mostly as donations, because volunteering is not really feasible with the pandemic happening with me being at risk so yeah um, I thought I will do this thing for the, for the week um, I don't stream video games I do stream open source work so that's going to be what you'll see here today uh, and for the rest of the week to give a bit of a plan of what we're going to be working on this week I do want to wrap up the work on Ampaper. I ported Ampaper to Mason over the previous streams and it seems to be working fine. I just need to make sure that everything is committed and ready to land on the main branch of Ampaper. And after that I want to move on something different because I'll be honest I don't really use Ampaper that much myself. I've been using it to learn Mason because I think Mason is a good replacement for auto tools nowadays and I do think that it is important to at least have an idea of what we should be using for new open source software it also reminded me of how much I hate C and C++ nowadays 
Uh, but yeah, like one thing at a time. Uh, moving on after that, I do want to um, work on one of the glucometers that I have over here, but I have not reviewed yet, or rather, I wrote a review for it, hasn't been posted yet. And it is the Glucoman Iro. It uses a Silicon Labs TP2104 fairly standard USB to serial adapter. Um, I actually use the CP2104 in a lot of my electronics de design and devices. And I realize I don't really have a good understanding of its protocols. So I do want to spend some time writing a chapter printer for it. And I'll show what I mean probably tomorrow, because today it's going to be on paper mostly. As I say, there are a couple of other electronics work that I need to work on, that I want to work on this week, and I have now the authority to go and release, because I got the right forms signed, and so you'll find me working and hopefully releasing on stream um, a couple of Sale adapters, including one that I already sent to Foon and I haven't managed to test because I haven't gotten the right connectors yet so I will have to do that after this stream because I'm not going to make orders while I'm streaming I do need to order a couple more components um, that I needed for some of my work anyway um, and complete that particular adapter again I'll show it in stream and I will release it I'm planning honestly to release it under the open hardware license and I think my chair is extremely loud on this microphone so give me just a second I'll show you what cuts protection has been doing this year and I'll be just right back standing desk so at least we don't get the noise from the chair moving on and off and I promise I will fix it before the next stream so you don't hear the neek of the uh, chair for the next voiceover uh, so yeah where were we with on paper uh, so last time we updated this to use a new version of Mason and we included the tests and we made sure that all of this pass on Travis so let me actually confirm that this still passes on Travis and everything is working fine so there we are by the way again cats.org.uk if you want to learn more about cats protection you can donate at flamenice.com slash cats which is actually just a redirect to tiltify it was easier to link here than not if anybody figures out why the tiltify campaign is named the way it is and you want to say it in the chat, I will be, well, let's say, I will be very surprised if anybody remembers what the reference of that is to, but I will also be very happy if anybody gets it. So, um, where were we? GitHub and paper, there we go. And this was, this is the main branch, last updated in December. Let's check the Maison branch. This is the one we care about, which was updated 22 days ago, three weeks ago, last time I did a stream. This 
12 commits ahead, 2 commits behind. I guess I need to rebase it when I merge it back. But also it should have a Travis build. So let's check the Travis build. Yes, I know this should be also migrated to GitHub Actions or anything like that because, yeah, not, not the greatest. Um, this is number 46 running Clang and GCC on Bionic on the Mason branch and it passes fine. Let's take a look at the Clang one. Okay. It exports. Okay, yeah, that's the best here so that we know that we actually install it somewhere. Builds from build. Okay. Yeah, we know that there are a bunch of deprecated declarations. We have a lot of old APIs from Microsoft Impact, but also need to be updated, but I haven't updated. Ignoring return value of function declared with ah this one is not great as a thing like the deprecated one is fine but this one is like oh, you're ignoring something you should not be ignoring maybe i should take a look at that one um the compile is fine it says no test defined okay oh by test not found test will not be performed we need to fix that then and clear all chats from travis ci because we don't really need any of that Okay, back to coding then. Oh. We do install Python free by test, but it's not found. So let's ignore this one and instead let's install PyTest. One. Oh, sorry. Ha. Two things, I guess. I need to remember to copy the. Oh, did this actually work? No, I didn't. I didn't. Let me create a new one. Code bash rc. I love this trait. But bash rc or bash profile non login shells. No, bash profile is the one I want. Okay. I actually don't know if this socket connect is the correct one, but we'll see. Open a new terminal. I can connect to the agent. I guess we'll figure it out. Um, next for editor code dash w. If you have not used this before, code dash w opens the code editor window and waits for it to be closed um, which is not very different from the Emacs client usage the good thing with that is that if you're acting on a remote machine like i'm now working on the wsl the windows subsystem for linux um, instance inside my normal workstation well my game station um, it brings up the editor on the local machine rather than on the remote one which makes things significantly easier overall so there we are The public key permission not found, so I didn't actually run it. Let's try and bash or see. I 
realtà ci loghiamo Sapeva, spero fa... Maybe it's not a login shower, the problem. Yeah, I think that's the issue. Also, thank you, cat protection. Again, please. Uh, this is good goals it's not for me just streaming um, it's also for me trying to get more open source software work done because otherwise i end up just lazing out this year has been complicated let's call it that way for everybody not just for open source software but for most of the people out there um, personally when i left the previous job i was hoping to get more open source software done during the break, which I did, um, but also afterwards, which I quite didn't. Um, the new job does make it much, much easier than the previous job, so from that side, good. But also it drained me and everybody else so much that it has been very difficult to get people to work and stuff together. We haven't had FOSDEM this year, well, we had the virtual FOSDEM, but that's not Fosdem, is it? Um, we haven't had this on that day last year. We're not going to have one this year, most likely, I would say. I feel fairly disconnected from the rest of the open source community. This is a way for me to also try to get back on track with that because I do miss the amount of people I met and worked with in open source and that I think are doing it still an awesome job. Um, today we've had, well, if you have been following open source news, you probably noticed one of the things that dropped today. And yeah, I, I don't like commenting on hot topics, so I'm not going to spend more on that, but I just, just, you notice me referring to it as, as open source, and I think that's going to be enough to say what I think about this whole situation. Anyway, back on the end paper. Let's see if this one works now. Okay, it's trying at least to connect. Hmm. So that's that seed that is failing. So let's comment this out for a moment. My debugging of why this thing is not working. The socket exists. But nothing has it open. Oh, in the first step over there is to remove it, I guess. The socket is running. Definition denied the public key. Do I have public keys loaded? I do have public keys loaded. I wonder if this thing actually is giving me a different setting. No. 
UAD is the same. So I guess this is meant to be. This way. Yeah, that's what it was missing. Okay. Let's restart this. Hyper V agent doesn't work. Okay. Well, this is going to get annoying. Sorry, folks. Let me try to figure out why is it saying that. Yeah, let me just check if there is a new version. No, last update on the 28th of Feb. Some pull request, that's a Hyper-V agent, that's a thing. Like, a yeah, Hyper-V agent with SOCAT, that's the way I'm actually using it right now. And yes, I am using an actual digital UV key. Choco installed, everything is fine. And I have Linux on the other machine, but it's like, it's going to be turned off. Funny enough, I used to have and, and I think I said that on stream before, I don't have a... Oh, sorry folks, I don't remember where the microphone is. Um, I do have a Linux machine on my desk, it's an Intel NAC. And it used to be on 24-7 because among other things, it ran Home Assistant. But I don't use it that much anymore. And I moved Home Assistant on an Android and shoe board. So I turned it off. It's not even on right now. Um, more interesting, I'm wondering why is this even... Okay, let's be kill again SoCat. Why is the clip telling me that Hyper-V agent doesn't work? Okay, now it started without telling me that the Hyper-V agent... Yeah, I know it's saying that it is working. So I had a feeling and the parameters are always the same. If it is that, I feel a bit silly, but let's see. Yeah, there you go. So if a socket is running in the WSL2, it holds the socket open and you cannot restart the agent, probably because the previous agent is still open, has the connection open, and it doesn't have a reuse address. Which is funny to know about. And that is an issue even on Linux. Um, and some of my ex co workers may remember, or at least have heard in passing, the story of a particularly flaky test that was trying to figure out whether a certain server would be able to start on a given port that started being flaky, but on like 0.1% of the rounds, which turned out to be sometimes the socket in TCP is free, but the socket on UDP on the same port is not, um, or at least is not at the same time. And if you hit that particular race condition, it doesn't start. It's always fun. I could always still make it as a 
hurt, right? If we get to a thousand pound donation for cat protection, I'll switch over to complete the stream on Linux. I somehow doubt we'll get to that. But would be nice. But if you think that I should be using Linux, please donate and get to the thousand pound and then I'll be using Linux for the rest of the streams. Anyway, where were we here? Yeah, okay, we pushed the Maison, the Maison build now. Uh, branches, 36 past, a day ago on Cron. Now, active, yeah, the, the Maison branch is active. But somehow, Travis is not seeing it. Yeah, okay. That's so we made current the last build on Maison Cron, which is not quite what I was looking for. But never mind the part for now. Okay, so I copy this out for now, plus this, plus this, we don't care about it. Biggest part should be done. Read me the MD. User Maison Sphinx. Yeah, we wanted the new version of Maison as well. We want 0 0.7. I think everything else here is fine and ready to be up. Ooh, that's using the wrong thing as well. And we should be in branch main. Base on top of main. I didn't rebase before pulling that. I never remember which one it is that I want. Ah, FF only. There we go. And the new push for main is there. Let's go back for a moment to GitHub. Let's look at the main branch. And it's there. So we now have unpaper main branch correctly building with Mason and documented building with Mason. So this is official. Unpaper is now a Mason project. And also I see that the donations are going up. Maybe people do want to see me using Linux for my streams. Let's see how it goes. And also, while I'm at it, let me tweet this out immediately so that people know that this is happening.
Okay, this is one problem less to have. Uh, this still needs some work. I said before that we should be splitting the teal, well, <laughs> the pants can continue. Until we hit the donation, pants will continue. So expect more pants, not just from Porky Shingwell. I have a feeling that I know who that is, mostly because I've been announced. Um, yeah, uh, this is the command line of Unpaper needs to be split from the actual logic behind it, and I will try to work through on that. Yeah, there will be some work needed there. Um, I also want to split this and make a few more changes. You can see here that there are some files that are currently under unlicensed. <sighs> Seems like currently the best option for things that should not even have a license is either MIT or zero BSD. I don't know if what remains with unlicensed. Let's see. Um, coding. It's a pre commit config. That's fine. That's easy to fix then. This one is now going to be on ZOBSD. And let me see what was using the MIT licenses of MIT on the old the old locals. No, okay, locals can stay in MIT. Actually, let's change this one to MIT because that way we have one that's it's essentially the same. And why that did, let's see and update these. So Pre-commit, the latest tag will be 340 instead of 230. That's quite a bit of it. Um, the reuse tool, which is an awesome tool from Free Software Foundation Europe, um, that follows the reuse software recommendation, and of which I am one of the contributors some time ago. Current tag is 0121. And the Clang formatter does not has any tags whatsoever, so it is just rev master. Okay, that works. Let's see, pre-commit from all. This will update all the pre-commits. If people have not seen pre-commit, it is awesome. It is one of the best tools to make sure that everything is formatted, checked. You don't need to go through reviews and go further. Um, oh, I definitely see that people want me to use Linux. Okay, yeah, we, let's get there. And then I'll use Linux and set up a proper OBS streaming in that case. Um, yeah, so. Don't waste time during reviews dealing with stylistic approaches. Like there is no point. Like, why waste humans time with, oh, you didn't follow the formatting of this particular project. Just use a formatter. If you don't like the formatter that are there, build your own. It's hard, take someone else's. Oh, it actually updates. Thanks, Duke. Then. Thank you for the kitties and Thank you for pushing me to use Linux again, um, which I will have to set up eventually. So yeah, pre-commit, awesome. Don't, don't bother with wasting people time. Ah, uh, yes and no. Uh, so Parkin Shingwell, and unless you change your username, I'm going to call you that. Um, Fergie Shingle is asking if you need to run pre-commit manually or installing the hook. Yes and no. Let's take a quick look. Browsing. Um, I think on paper doesn't have this. Uh, but I do have it on... Glucometer material heals which I will get at later. Um, if we look at any of the pull requests from these, the closed ones, because they are not open right now, let's say this one, 
there are a number of checks on the pull request, including pre-commit. So you can configure pre-commit as an option. And so even if you didn't install the hook locally, it does warn people if they send a pull request that doesn't follow the style guide or the formatter in particular. Yes, it does mean that they will have to send the pull request and then they get the feedback of like, whoops, you did it wrong. But then they also get to know that like, just run this one command and everything is fine. I do have, I think on blue commentary appeals, let me check the readme over here. Yes, um, over here, you can see the instructions when I suggest people for development to clone the repository, set up a virtual environment, activate it, install the .dev, which does install pre-commit and a bunch of other things, and then run pre-commit install. This part over here installs the hook, so any change you make when you go to git commit, it will actually go and say, hey, hmm, maybe you should reformat this thing differently. So yeah, it is more automated than you may think. So we have this done. Yes, let's keep our um, licenses unlicensed because now we no longer use unlicensed anywhere, right? No longer unlicensed. Again, I like unlicensed as an explicit. I don't need to hold copyright onto this thing. It's sorry. Um, it's not well seen by some people. Let's put it this way. Um, I was actually having an interesting discussion on Twitter with Will Norris, formerly of Google. We'll find out how. Google accept unlicensed licensed software, but does not allow using it for new software, which is one of the few violations of the reciprocity between using and contributing to. So I've been avoiding using unlicensed. I actually checked this out before leaving the company last year, and it was supposed to be allowing contribution of people to it but then they changed the documentation after i left and after i blogged about it so there we go um zero bsd um, or mit if you take, if you really want in this case i'm using mit because everything else in the repository is mit anyway um, other repositories of mine will have zero bsd which is essentially the same thing as an MIT, just it doesn't even have the one clause about maintaining the copyright notice. Because for things like configuration files, like the pre-commit over here, or the Maison build itself, like that's not something that I care to assert copyright myself. Um, in this case, it's a bit more complicated because as you can tell, it's not just me holding copyright over this and so the build system i still prefer putting it under mid one note which has been told before and may not be obvious to everybody the gpl2 license requires you to have the build system released together with source code under the gpl2 license that doesn't mean that you cannot apply a more liberal license to a build system. You can do that, which is what I'm doing here. The whole Maison.build file has an MIT license attached to it. It just means that when people receive a copy of the tarball, they receive under the GPL chip. They can just look at the build system and copy it under MIT. But if they were to distribute the whole thing together, the whole thing is GPL2. The main thing you cannot do is to restrict the build system more than the GPL2 would allow you to. Which some of the more seasoned users of Linux may remember happening with CDR utils, CD record, the whole shilling thing where half of the 
build system at some point was released under the CDDL from Sun, Sun Microsystems. So, yeah, um, I, I don't think there is value in restricting the build system in any way for this, and that's why I apply the more liberal license to it than the source code itself. The source code is all under GPL2 because, well, that's the license that I received it on, and I can pass it on as, but that's where it stops. Okay, so this part is done. Let's commit this thing as well. And I need to make sure I actually... Let me just fix this. Also, you folks who can hear the rest of the stream can try and tell me how loud the keyboard feels. This is a Microsoft Sculpt, which usually is a very quiet keyboard. And yet I can hear it back in the monitor headphones as if it was a cherry brown. I'm half tempted to take the cherry brown out and try to see just how loud that will be. but. Yeah, no, let's not do that tonight. <laughs> Maybe later for the other streams. Okay, this can save. And I can push this one. Because on paper didn't have a very reliable testing before, and I will say it still doesn't, like it has the one I have, but it's fairly bad. I have not set up Mergeify for it. I will think that that's going to be the next step um, for this project overall, because I do think that if you have, <laughs> okay, if you haven't seen Mergeify, let me go back to browsing. So this is what I was showing earlier. These are the pre-commit tests for Glucometer Utils, which runs the whole pre-commit itself doesn't really give us much information on that, but essentially it will... Oh yeah, I need to sign in for the log view, which I don't want to sign in right now. Um, and then it runs Travis, as I said, and then it runs Mergeify. So Mergeify has matching rules that can decide when to merge something into the main branch. In this case, this is a pull request that came from someone else, not from me. It was approved by me, so the approved reviewer spy was more than one, one being me. It checked that Travis passed for the pull request, and it checked that pre-commit passed. And at that point, it just merged it. It didn't apply this one, which is essentially the same, except instead of waiting for one reviewer, given that this project is mostly me and there isn't a second reviewer to go, um, it just approves automatically. As long as Travis and Precommit pass, then it merges into main. And this goes for all of the pull requests, except where I'm changing the actual um, can see it was merged. Did it say by who? No, it doesn't. But you can see that all of these, and yes, they are not very well named because most of these are just me. Uh, instead of just pushing, I'm sending a pull request and then mergeify. And you can say from the commit line, uh, all the stuff happens with mergeify. Both of you 
watching working at Google probably have seen this style of changes before. And yes, I'm essentially doing the same thing, um, except with an external service because outside the bubble. And I love it because this way I don't end up committing broken code myself simply because I'm like, oh yeah, it's fine. It's, it, it, it worked fine, pass per commit and then it fails test. I'm gonna be like, yeah, I wrote that, so this one it's fine. And then I break something completely different. So I really enjoy having Mergeify there to help me and merge stuff by itself. Also, I don't mix and merge and pull requests. It's nice and clean and everything is as it should be. So, finger crossed, um, but on paper can do exactly the same soon. Um, back on the on paper side, I think this, we, we can call this ready. Um, I think I'll call for test of this. And yeah, I'll get somebody from Amazon to retweet and then I'll prepare a new cut or maybe I will fix the FFM pack. We have 13 minutes to go on this stream, so probably not a good idea to start a new project. Tomorrow is going to be USB modules because I have a USB tray so they want to analyze. But before we get to that, let's do a little bit more cleaning up of this on paper because we are pretty much better. We just need to have it all ready to test. So, if I may as well see writer compile. Oh, sorry. I never remember the syntax. Compile the C capital C. Makes sense. It's the same as make. I don't remember the syntax. It's the same as the previous two. Um, And AV register O is deprecated. AV codec register O is deprecated. Okay, let's go and try to figure out why. And just so just removing it. Because if I look at that, don't call deprecated functions, which don't do anything. Awesome. So I can remove this and it's not a problem. Let's do that. The good thing is that I can do this. And it should. It really inked the target and now it's running the Python sweep. Also, since I know that at least two people viewing the streams have seen this stream before, please do let me know if the microphone works better or not, because this time I set up a proper mics input with a proper mixer, because I heard my own voice back last time and I was like, no. And that's mostly because I worked in streams before. As one of my many past lives, I've worked for a company that set up real-time video streaming. And I ended up spending a lot of time testing microphones, let's put it this way, um, and different combination of them and trying to get all of them to work on Pulse Audio and which, let's be fair, when you go on even semi-pro equipment, it's much, much easier. Like, I think I needed one quirk for one of the USB uh, mixers we had. 
but nearly everything else that had the USB um, audio interface and was semi-pro used it perfectly normally. Like no quirks, no strange also drivers, no um, strange full audio configuration. You just plug it and you get your source and your sync as well. Everything works fine. Yeah, the electrical background noise. I... Let's see if this one works a bit better on the volume. And for the electrical, there is a little bit of too much of a loop. I think what you're hearing is not even like the electrical background noise as much as you're hearing the fans steaming out from nearly everything else around me. Or it could be... No, it's not the Dyson. I do want to try to rewire this a little better with the XLR cable without having to go through a number of steps, but... Well, it's running the test suite, it doesn't fail yet. That's already a good starting point, because if it's completely broken and it didn't initialize the inputs, it would not be working. So those two steps are working fine. Let me check what the other thing was. Um, ignoring return value of a format right header. Okay. And that all files, let's see. And this one returns an integer. Yeah, it returns in it in right header on success. It returns negative AV error on failure. I don't care if it was initialized or not, because those are the two cases of the positive one. So as long as it's not negative, everything is fine. This one is still running. So in the meantime, I can change this to if this less than zero. Oh, there is a Maven tab now. Ooh. I haven't seen this. This is neat. This is very neat. Oh. There is a whole Maven project inspector as part of Visual Studio Code. That works very well. can click straight into say index.rst from here. I don't have a restructured text extension though, I should that one. And again, this doesn't mean by, all, by, any, by any means that the unpaper project is dull and dusted and everything is awesome with it. There are plenty of things that needs to be fixed with it. Case in point, um, the documentation is still written as markdown files, it's not linked at all with everything else that is going on. I really wish this was just all in restructured text so I could just get everything together in one place. But yeah, this is more work that I put in on paper for the past few months that I put probably in the past 10 years. Easy. And there is, yeah, there you go, all the test suite passed. I'm going to do the same again. Yeah, I need to change the codec in deprecated and change the AV codec and code video too. So there is still a little bit more that needs to be done, including this file name. There are things that needs to be addressed on the deprecation side, but it works. That's good. 
I hadn't really touched on paper much since I joined Google in 2013. The reason for that has been that I, and I think that was a mistake, I asked for an IARC request so that I would keep copyright onto it, which was a bit silly given that I don't even own most of the copyright for hand paper because I forked and well, I took over the project when the original author had not been working on it for many years to salvage it from the early disclosure. I guess at the time it just felt going through the normal open source contribution at Google was too difficult. This was before one of the many reshuffle and before the open source programs office actually released the documentation on how the open source of Google is used for the rest of the world to know. And because of that, I ended up not really spending much time. Um, funny story, one of my not teammates, but colleagues from the same floor, um, when I joined in 2013, at some point asked me something about that paper, and I was like, well, shall we have a little bit of a drink at the coffee shop next door, and then I will tell you about it, because otherwise I'm not allowed. That was not the last time that somebody asked me work-related questions about the project that I was not allowed to talk about at work. <laughs> the test suite is still running. Let this give it a, a bit more time. Um, also, is it just me who noticed that the Visual Studio theme that I'm using has the WSL in the corner here? so much reminiscent of the Windows XP default theme, like with the green start button and the blue bar. I, I just realized that. <laughs> Maybe I'm a bit slow on this. Okay, as the codec copy context is deprecated. The codec is deprecated, but let's start with this one. Okay, so that's because the, con the whole context, so these are all related, the codec, the codec context entirely is deprecated and the context is deprecated. So that one will require some more work, not a lot more work, but some more work to get them changed. So I'll probably work on that another time this week. And I guess Uh, that's codec that is deprecated and then code video two is deprecated. Okay, that's this one is going to be Yeah, we need to use send frame for this one. And I think that's also for file.c, yeah. So file.c has most, actually, very many of the happening here. Are the frame, yes. I actually think that probably before, I think a deformant is needed for the frame or a util. One of these two is needed, the, or the three is needed. I think the other two are not. So I will try and play around with those. And over here, um, 
Yeah, this one sends the. It takes in a decodex context, a decodex and frame. Doesn't include the got packet, which. Yeah, it's just an empty packet right now. Yeah, the test pass for this one. So this is the easy one. So let's see the other one. here yeah I want the I think it's just this this one should not be needed and this one either let's see ah no target undeclared ORV right frame did I I think I don't need this one anymore either. Let's see. Now, of course, the code video two is also deprecated because it should use a decodec. I got this right. I got the second frame, yeah. Uh, oh, send packet receive frame. I'm sorry, I need to. But anyway, I think Unpaper for tonight is in a good state, and tomorrow I can set this aside and instead work on USB mount tools. So if you want to join me tomorrow, 7.30 London time, um, about an hour, like today, it's going to be mostly Python, it's going to be USB mount tool and a bunch of reverse engineering the way I usually do it with a black box of, I have a device, I don't know what protocol the device speaks, but I can see what it's sending to the computer and back. It will probably take a couple of days, a couple of sessions to go through that. Um, but yeah, tomorrow that's going to be the main topic. And once again, I'm doing this as part of Cats Productions Boson Players Week. Donate on playmice.com slash cats. Go through Guiltify just so that they don't need to provide the full URL. And nobody has yet to guess on why the campaign is named the way it is. So if anybody knows me for the past 15 years, you can probably guess it. Let's put it this way. Oh, the tests failed now. Okay, I have one failure. That's going to be fun. Let's check just what failed. Everything failed. Everything failed. Okay. I guess I cannot change it this simple way. So I'm returning this the way it was, where the test passed, and for now it's just some of the deprecated stuff. Anyway, see you all tomorrow, and maybe later this week we'll finish for the deprecated stuff. See you!